हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला आई एम योर इंस्ट्रक्टर अनु एंड दोज ऑफ यू हु वांट्स टू ज्वाइन माय फ्री लाइव सेशन एंड डाउनलोड फ्री क्लास रिसोर्सेज यू कैन गो टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन सेक्शन ऑफ द वीडियो एंड ज्वाइन माय टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड टेलीग्राम ग्रुप फ्रॉम देयर दैट्स ऑल नाउ इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव लर्न व्हाई वी नीड प्रिकर्सन एंड वी स्पेसिफाइड वेरियस रीजंस फॉर द नीड फॉर रिकर्सन so in this module we are going to look at declaration form of recursive method and how it works so let me create a, a recursive method here so we need to take into account two conditions a condition where method call itself with a smaller values and the second condition is exit from an infinite loop so taking into account these two conditions the basic syntax of recursion will be like this from this syntax we can easily see that the mentioned two conditions are implemented over here so it checks given condition if the condition is satisfied then it returns some value over here otherwise it continues to call recursive method recursively until the condition is met before explaining how recursion works internally let's look at how a normal method works internally let's imagine we have four different functions over here and each of these functions call one another so the first method calls the second method and then prints out i am the first method and the second method calls the third method and then prints out i am the second method and the third method conveniently calls the fourth method and then again it prints out i am the third method and finally the fourth method prints out i am the fourth method without calling any method so let's see what's happening in the stack memory when we call the first method the stack memory is maintained by the system for the method invocation you may already know that stack memory works on lifo method which means that the last entered will be removed first here push method is used to insert into a stack and a pop method is used for removal if you don't know what the stack is we will discuss it in the stack section in detail so you don't need to worry about it okay here we start from first method as soon as we call the first method the first statement that we see within the first method is to call the second method so the control goes to the second method after completing the second method it needs to come back to first method to execute the print statement after the second method call so the system needs to store the first method somewhere to come for executing the rest of code which is within the first method once the second method execution is done so the system will push the first method to the stack memory so in this way the system remembers that it needs to come back to the first method which is so if you look at the second method we see that this method also calls another method which is third method so the system once again needs to store the second method to come back to execute print statement after the third method so the second method will be pushed to stack as well and this is applicable for third method because it also calls another method within before executing the rest of the code so it will be pushed to the stack as well the last method here is the fourth method which is executing one line of code without calling any function which means that the system does not need to store it somewhere for calling back so it will not be inserted in stack memory 
So after finishing execution of fourth method, how does the system know that it needs to go back and execute third method, not the second method? So this will come from stack memory. As we said, it works based on last in first dot strategy. So the last method that is added to stack is the third method. So this method will be called by the system as a next step to execute the rest of code, which is printing I am the third method. So this method will be called by system as a next step to execute the rest of code, which is printing I am the third method. So after this statement, we know that third method is done. So it will be popped out from the stack memory. And here again, the next thing will be from the stack memory as well, which is second method. So the second method will be called and print statement inside second method will be executed. And with this, we know that the execution of second method is complete, which means that it will be popped out from the stack memory. Now the system one more time refers to the stack memory and calls first method and execute the print statement inside the first method. And with this execution of first method is complete. So the first method will be popped out of the stack memory. So with this all execution is complete. So now it should be clear how method execution is managed in stack memory. Okay, let's see how recursive method is stored in stack memory. As an example, we will look at this method over here. This is a recursive function that calls itself. First, it checks if the entered parameter is less than one. Then it prints out and is less than one. Else it calls itself with parameter and minus one. So to make things clear, Let's run this function for parameter of 4. And let's see how this will be managed in stack memory. When you run this function with parameter 4, first the system checks that whether 4 is less than 1. We see that 4 is greater than 1. So this means that else statement will be executed, which called the recursive function with parameter 3. So recursive method with parameter 4 will be stored in stack memory to come back for executing the print statement after this. So when running this function with parameter 3, the system once again checks that whether 3 is less than 1. We see that 3 is greater than 1. So this means that else statement will be executed, which is calling recursive method with parameter 2. So the recursive method with parameter 3 will be stored in stack memory to come back for executing the print statement after this. So once again, when running the recursive function with the parameter 2, the system first checks if condition. We see that 2 is greater than 1, which means that else statement will be executed, which is calling recursive method with parameter 1. So the recursive method with parameter 2 will be stored in stack memory. So once again, when you are running the function with parameter 1, the system checks that this condition and we will see that 1 equals to 1. So, which means that else condition will be executed, which is calling recursive method with parameter of 0. So the recursive method with parameter 1 will be stored in stack memory. So when we call recursive method with parameter 0, we see that 0 is less than 1, which means n is less than 1. So the print statement executed and no need for storing method in stack memory. So to continue the execution, system refers to the stack memory again. So the last method is post that will be first executed, which is recursive method with parameter 1 in our case. So it will call the method with parameter of 1, which will print 1. 
So in our case, n is 1 because after calling the recursive method with parameter 0, which is 1 minus 1, then we print n. Here in our case, n is 1. So the output from the recursive method with parameter 1 will be 1. And after calling this method from the stack, it will be popped up from the stack memory. So once this statement is executed, the recursive method with parameter 1 is completed. So the system will go to the next method, which is located in stack memory. In our case, it's a recursive method with parameter 2. And this will again print 2 because when you call this method with parameter 2, it's calling recursive method with parameter 1. It prints out 2 because n is 2. And after calling this function, this method from stack memory will be popped out. So as a next step, the system will call the next method from stack memory, which is the recursive method with parameter 3. And this will print out 3 as an output. So after executing this method, the recursive method with parameter 3 will be popped out of the stack memory. As a next step, the last method from the stack will be called, which is recursive method with parameter 4. So when you call this function with parameter 4, after calling the recursive method with parameter 3, here we have output 3. It should print out n, which is 4 in our case. At the end, recursive method with parameter 4 will be popped out of stack memory. So this is how recursive method is managed in stack memory internally. Hopefully everything is cleared now. Let's recap what we have learned from this lecture. We understood that stack memory is used by the system for managing recursive calls. So every time recursive method calls itself, the system stores it in the stack for coming back because there are execution statements left after calling itself. This means that the system somehow should remember the point where it stops to call recursive method with different parameter based on the condition for coming back. This is done by storing methods in stack memory. And the stack memory manages to value based LIFO method which is lasting first on. And this is all for this lecture. Hopefully you have understood everything clearly. So see you in the next lecture. Till then, keep learning, keep smiling.